just, and I mean just a, a few moments ago, finished the last episode of Catch 22. I wasn't going to watch it. Uh, I saw the trailer and I was like, well, this looks too goofy to be a good adaptation of the book. Uh, I haven't read the book in a while, but I have, I have read the book. I really enjoyed it. I've reread parts of it, but I've not read it in its entirety more than once. But then my dad watched it and he was like, it's not as bad as it looks in the trailer. And I was like, mm, still a bit unsure, but I thought, okay, I'll watch an episode. How bad could it be? And honestly, it's not that bad. It's not. I actually enjoyed most of it. I thought a lot of it was very well done. I think if you hadn't read the book, you'd probably like it a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that I didn't like it a lot. Uh, I thought it was really good, honestly, truly. Um, is it a great representation of the book? Is that the worst representation of the book? Is that, like, I can settle for that? Um, but it's also not the best representation of the book. So in some areas, I was pleasantly surprised that it was better than I thought it would be. And in other areas, I was a bit... Um, disappointed because it wasn't as good as I had hoped. I have made some notes, but not a terrible amount of notes. Um, so mostly this is just going to be whatever pops into my head. A good old rant uh, about all the reasons why I'm stuck up because I've read the book. That's what we're going to do today. There will be spoilers. Spoiler warning. Hello. Um, yeah, I think that's all I need to say about that. So I'd like to begin by saying that I understand how terribly difficult it must be to pick up Catch-22 and think to yourself, hmm, I'm going to make this into a television series. Because, let me explain. If you haven't read the book, let me explain. This book is such a clusterfuck of characters and things happening and it's honestly sometimes it can be a bit difficult when you're reading to just keep track of who's who because there are so many characters, there's so much going on and to add to that, it's not told linearly, I hope I said that right, it's not told in order like things tend to be. Um, and you'll think, as you're reading the book, you'll think that you're just reading a bunch of nonsense that doesn't, that won't lead anywhere. But then when you actually get near the end, you realize how it all fits together and how none of it is actually nonsense and how it all serves a purpose in the grand scheme of things. Which is just like, honestly, it's so good. It's so well made. So the things I liked about the, f the I was gonna say the film, it's not a film. Uh, what I liked about the series was that I feel like it did capture a lot of the energy that Catch-22 has. I think that uh, the cast is amazing. I especially liked um, Milo Minderbinder's character, and not the character, the actor, who played Milo Minderbinder, because he was really good, and I felt like his character was written in a very good way, in a way that was very close to the book. Uh, actually, out of all of them, I'd say that he's the one that they really got the best. I thought the actor playing Jossarian was very good. I thought that his, like, the character was written less well, which I guess I go into that. Um, to me, and <laughs> to a lot of people who've read the book, Jossarian is supposed to be a bit problematic. Like, you're supposed to, at least I think, I did. You're supposed to root for him throughout the, the the story, but he'll do things that you're just not 
really support. Like every once in a while he'll do something where at least I was like, mm, I mean, I like, I like what you're doing and all that, but don't you think that this is taken a bit far? So <clears throat> he's supposed to be an extreme and I feel like he's less of an extreme in the series. But not, he, he's just, um, I feel like they removed a lot of his bad traits and mostly kept in the good traits like oh he's such a loving person oh he's such this and that which he is but he's also a lot of other stuff that's not as positive another problem uh i mean we're talking characters i think that many other characters were underdeveloped which again i get it because you're making this clusterfuck of a book into a series of six episodes so, you know, you can't go into depth about Nate Lee and his whole thing or, 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 um, which I think is the most, like, it's probably the thing that bothered me the most was that Or's character wasn't portrayed, like, in the book, Or is a crazy man who sees flies in people's eyes and puts crab apples in his cheeks. And, you know, he's well known for getting into plane crashes, which gets his explanation later. But in, in the series, who is Orr? Orr is just a guy who's Jossarian's friend and he has absolutely no personality whatsoever. And, oh, he went to Sweden? How did we get here? That's such a big part of the story. And it's like the twist at the end. And it was just completely glossed over. They had changed some other stuff. Um, for instance, I didn't quite like the whole, ooh, I blew my balls off. <laughs> I thought that was a bit too goofy. The whole thing with Chai's cop and him being mad at Yossarian for having sex with his wife. That's also not a thing in the book. Um, he does have sex with his wife, but so does like everyone else. So there's no reason why um, he would be more angry with Yossarian for that. Another thing about characters is Arfi. In the book, Arfi is there a lot and he says things and we're aware that he's a character and kind of what he's like um we get some um hints about what he's like with the women but i feel like in the series it's just like oh wow that guy that jesarian knows a bit because they sit at the same table when they eat uh that guy is a murderer and a rapist. Who knew? There's also the whole thing that they cut out. And I'm a bit sad that they cut that out. Because that's one of the things that I remember very vividly in the ending. That um, Nate Lee's whore, which is not called in the series, but she is in the book. Nate Lee's whore is trying to kill Yosarian because she feels that it's his fault that uh, Nate Lee died. Which... In, strangely enough, in the series, that is the case, sort of. Like, I could see why someone would think that it was Jossarian's fault, because he chose to go back over the bridge. Whereas in the book, um, Nate Lee dies in an unrelated incident. Uh, so I'm not sure, I thought when they did that, I was like, oh wow, they're making it so that his... <clears throat> Uh, as it is in the series, fiance to be uh, wants to murder him because he, she thinks that he killed her future husband. And I really thought that that's what that was building up to. And I thought, oh, that's clever because it doesn't quite make sense in the book because Yusarian didn't really have anything to do with it. But then they just did nothing with it anyway. So I just sat there like, uh, okay. They also changed the order of things a bit and they told it linearly, um, which it, it works and it doesn't. 
I feel like they could have woven in the Snowden thing a lot more. I feel like it would have been... Because that, that's what it's like in the book. Uh, they keep going back to the Snowden thing and you keep getting more and more details. In the beginning, you don't really know anything about what's led up to that point. Um, but it gets clearer and clearer the further you get into the book. Um, whereas now it's just like, oh, here's a new kid. Oh, he's dead. This is a frustrating thing. Like, it works if you haven't read the book. If you've read the book, you'll feel like something is missing. And there were several, like, little bits of the book that I missed as I was watching the series. I was like, but wait, they... The kid that gets killed in the first episode on his first um, mission, who's new and comes into Jazarian's and Orr's tent, later becomes the ghost in their tent. And Jazarian goes around telling people that, oh, I have a ghost in my tent. Um, I missed that. And just many little things like that, that I just remember from this book that I was like, where's this? Where are the crab apples? Huh? Which, like, I get that they can't use everything from the book, but I, I I, just really wanted them to, I guess. Give me 44 episodes of this series, please. I don't think they intend to follow this up with a series about Closing Time, which is the sequel to Catch-22 that I actually finished today. Um, because in the scene with Snowden, they show... Um, the tail gunner uh, area empty because they're, I guess Snowden's supposed to be the tail gunner, but that's not the way it happened in the book. Because in the tail gunner bit is Sammy Singer, who will be a character in the sequel because almost everyone else is dead. So to sum everything up, I'd say that it was a good series. I enjoyed it. I would encourage people to watch it. But <laughs> I would also encourage people to read the book. You could easily read the book even if you've seen the series because uh, they're just, they're not really the same thing. Um, like you'll know most of the story but you'll get a lot more of the side stuff um, and just the way it's told is I, I love it I do and I'm getting hot now and that's not where this was going so I think I've said everything that I wanted to say about the series watch it or don't watch it I guess if if you would like to read the book, I suggest reading the book before watching the TV series. If you don't intend on reading the book, watch the TV series. That's my advice. Thank you for sticking around and listening to my enormous rant. I will see you soon. Bye.